Welcome back, everybody. Uh, the Verdun North American Championships. We are jumping right into it here with Average Joe's versus SMW. SMW just coming off uh, a big win over. Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, it is it is Cuck versus SMW. SMW just finished a big win over Average Joe's. Um, the first round very convincing. Very, uh, I would say, very one sided. Second round, much more competitive. We'll see what Average Joe's does in their, in their game against Cuck later today. Uh, guys, I'm, I'm joined by Soren and, and Nord Manon, as well as Meeks, um, three very uh, prevalent, um, uh, huge celebrities in the very <laughs> dumb community, one could say. You are uh, way too kind about that. <laughs> one, one could say, and one would probably be, probably be wrong. But, uh, <laughs> one, one, one just said it. So, uh, <laughs> we are, uh, yeah, very much looking forward to uh, SMW and Cuck here. You guys, I know, have had some experience playing against uh, against Cuck. What, uh, what, what, kind, what can we expect from this team? Well, again, this is a relatively new team. Uh, who came, who sort of appeared, you know, a couple months ago. Uh, they're they're a group of pub players who I believe play together for the most part. Uh, so I haven't, I personally haven't played against them. I'm not Meeks. Have you played against Cuck at all? I haven't played m much against them in competitive rounds. I have spent some time with them in public matches, and they are a very capable team. But it's it's really going to be interesting to see what they can do against kind of a veteran squad like SMW on a map like I. It's um, it's very picker friendly, as you can see. It's very open, uh, so it's really going to come down to kind of who has the fastest react reaction time. And just a quick of a uh, bit of a terminology uh, definition: picker. When we say picker, we're talking about someone who kind of uh, sits back and picks people off from a long range. Uh, and just to clarify, we're not starting the match yet. This is just the uh, warm up period. We're still waiting for a couple people to join the server, and then we will get going. But Ayn is definitely, it's a very different map from Artois. It favors a little bit more of slow play, uh, a little bit more of that picker style of play where you're kind of sitting back, picking people off at long range. Um, players, I think, on SMW like Banshee and Fabian are going to be feel very comfortable on a map like this. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Cut can kind of challenge the sort of uh, long range dominance that a team like SMW you would expect them to have over, over a, a newer level team. So it'll be interesting to see. Is well, that a is that a problem? common strategy uh, for a uh, for a competitive Verdun team to have a dedicated picker? It's like this guy is our best pure shooter. He's going to set up here on this hill, uh, this, this, and that's yeah. his job. Yeah, um, a lot of teams will have one, maybe even two pickers uh, designated. On a lot of the teams I've played on in the past, we've had a picker designated in, e in each squad. Um, so it's definitely something that a lot of the veteran teams do do. I'm not sure if SMW does that. But there's even if it's not like a, a, a defined thing or a team thing a team does intentionally, there are certain players who play that style, and that's just the type of role they take up naturally within their team. And I, I would say that on on this SMW team, Banshee and Fabian are those types of players. Um, as far as Cut goes, I'm not sure. I haven't played with them very much, um, so it'll be interesting to see who their uh, who their stronger players end up being. As far as that picker, pickers are usually the type of people we see at the top of the scoreboard. Players like Zab tend to be pickers. Uh, some players in the past I can think of that were did very well in that role are people like Rebel or Shadow Step on uh, CT last year. Um, uh, yeah, it's it, it's a very so interesting role. Spending uh, spending not nearly as much time actually in the trench, but more back away from the fight, uh, landing those long range yeah. shots. What uh, what what classes uh, in these squads does uh, does that lend itself to? Those uh, like what what weapons should I be using if I want to be a good picker? Well, usually in the recon squad, you'll see people taking up that marksman role. You'll see even right now if both Fabian and Banshee in that marksman role in their given squads, as they are the pickers for SMW. Um, that will give them a longer hold breath duration, um, slightly more. I, I think it might give. Let me check. I'm not sure exactly what it does, actually. But I believe it. I know it gives you slightly longer hold breath, and it might give you slightly accurate, slightly more accurate shots. I can't remember. There's a few perks to that, it, but it's not a super important thing. The big difference between the classes isn't huge. In this, it's more of a squad thing, and, and what are the advantages of, uh, of the squads and the NCOs' abilities? Um, so, usually you'll see the pickers taking those more marksman 
related uh, roles, but sometimes you'll see them taking something else. It really is very much a player preference thing as to what class they like. And something that's interesting with Cuck is they're running a French squad, I believe, and their pickers are using the Musketon, which is a very, very effective weapon. It's very fast. It has a good bolt speed. You can reload it quickly, but its range is pretty short. Uh, so it'll definitely be interesting to see if they can kind of keep up the long-range battle with SMW using that, rather than the SMLE, which is a much more powerful rifle um, that's also very quick that a lot of other teams like to use. The uh, the terrain in this in this map uh, would seem to favor that kind of uh, that kind of weapon. Uh, as it is, you seem to have much more tree coverage. Uh, uh, it seems to be a bit more hilly. Um, so there, there's I, I I feel like we're gonna see a lot more of those uh, more close range, maybe a bit more slow developing uh, conflicts. Yeah, this map can definitely have a lot of variants. There's some sections of the map that are very long range, but once you get into the trench, it's a pretty close course, close quarters fight. It's definitely an, a very dynamic map, especially in that second uh, Entente trench. We have a big forest there, so that leads to some close range and long range firefights, depending on the situation. I think this is definitely going to be an interesting match. What I think we'll probably see a lot of is... Um teams holding the flanks. As you can maybe see uh, on the screen, there's something of a bunker on that left side. It's also there on the right. Uh, and those are great positions to take and hold because it gives you a full view of the map, which will allow for more effective picking. Yeah, this is a very wide map as compared to our Artois, the last match we played. So there's going to be a lot more options for flanking, for sort of sneaky plays to go on in this map than there was, was on Artois. And obviously the tree cover is just another reason that that becomes very effective because you can move along certain lines of play where you're less easily spotted by the enemy team. This is definitely a map where def defense can be very difficult and require a lot of teamwork as rotations are going to be very important. Knowing where to look on the map is going to be very important depending on the situation. But this match uh, looks like we're waiting actually on some Cuck players to join right now. We do have the full SMW roster. Uh, Cuck says their seventh is about to join, and then I believe we'll go live after that. So how often, um, I mean, you guys are of course very involved in the competitive community. Um, uh, Verdun has a very, has a very passionate uh, fan base, although not a massive one. Um, this competitive community, uh, do they? You seem to run into each other a lot. You guys all like I, I ran into Zab in a, in a competitive game today, or not a competitive game in a in a public game today. Um, do you guys uh, do you guys feel like you're starting to you, you've started to learn each other's tendencies more and more? Uh, it, like, is there is there an advantage to having this experience against uh, familiar uh, familiar it's opponents? It's very funny that you mention that because oftentimes in pub games where we'll be talking on Discord, playing against each other, uh, we'll shoot at somebody and say, Zab, is, I mean, is that you? Because we, we do learn the movements of each other. We know kind of how another player moves so we can kind of hone in on kind of where the biggest threat is. And, and we know what positions certain people like to play. There are certain players who like to play certain positions on certain maps, and that's a thing you can learn very easily. Or you just learn their style. I, uh, I think it's harder to learn team styles because of maybe the teams are changing a lot all the time, and 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 we we don't have as much competition. We don't have we're not competing on like a daily basis or a weekly basis like maybe some of the bigger esport games are. So I think knowing individual players is something that a lot of players do and, and get used to because they're playing each other in pubs all the time but knowing how a team plays is a much more difficult thing to learn but yeah certainly uh, certain players have very distinct styles of player players like uh, Zab Emperor are, are, are pretty easy players to spot in a server even if you don't see their name you just see you know how they're playing and you can go oh that's who that is you just see you dying, and you know it's Zap. <laughs> That's one way to put it, I suppose. <laughs> I, I, I got to kill Zab one time. Uh, 
I, I like I it I, like I peaked. That's it for me. <laughs> that feeling retiring. never goes away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, there really isn't any player who doesn't get a little bit of a smile on their face when they kill Zab. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No matter how long you've been playing the game. <laughs> I was I was one I was once in a game with Zab where uh, the uh, the other team was actually arguing amongst themselves uh, about whether or not Zab should even be allowed in the game. They were basically <laughs> saying uh, that he is ruining the game for everybody uh, and that he should just move on to something more attuned to his skills. Well, here, is here, here's a funny story. Back back when me and Eeks were on a team with Zab uh, back in the day called Salt was the name of our team. Uh, we used to play pubs and we would actually have to, everyone on the team would have to change their names in order to play in the same game together, otherwise the other team would just completely leave. <laughs> <laughs> so if we even wanted to play pubs, we would all have to go in with fake names and just play that way. Otherwise, wow. everyone would just leave. <laughs> Some may say we started fake news. <laughs> <laughs> Again, some could say that. <laughs> but Not some many people will. would be full of shit. <laughs> But looks like everyone is getting ready now. Both teams saying that they are ready. Looks like Cuck will be playing down one player, but looks like we are about to get right into the match. CPU informing his team that uh, MGs are not allowed. So hopefully we will not have another <laughs> incident with that. <laughs> I love the uh, I love the 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 final war. I love the admin chat. When the admin comes in, it's big, bright it's like red little, letters. Yeah, that was a nice. Uh, it's it's like I can feel a us. finger being wagged at me. It didn't always do that, but that was something that they added uh, to the admin function, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. Yes, all uh, mountable MGs are banned. Just to confirm to everyone, uh, automatic weapons that are not banned include the MP18 and the BAR. Those are not banned weapons because they are not deployable. The reason uh, we get this question a lot: Why are deployable MGs banned? The problem is that there's a lot of spots on the map where you can deploy the MG and it's glitched so you, people can't kill you. Um, and it's not, we could simply ban that, but there's so many spots on maps that it's very easy to do that unintentionally. So, uh, just obviously. Just remove the variable altogether. Yeah, just the, the best way to do it is just to remove the variable altogether. Uh, otherwise, it's just, it's a, it's a big problem. But everything other than deployable MGs is allowed to be used. So. Okay. Pistols are fully allowed to be used. Uh, RSC is allowed to be used. Any of the automatic weapons which are not deployable. Uh, I have noticed that um, it, it that uh, the um, the pistol does not necessarily seem like the default secondary weapon like it is in so many games. Uh, many classes actually use. Uh, the pistol as their primary, is that correct? Yeah, there are certain classes that use uh, pistols as the primary. Um, you'll see, and, and a lot of classes won't have a secondary, or your secondary will be a knife or a bayonet or something to that degree. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few classes in the game that have both a rifle and a pistol, but it's a pretty rare sight. Um, and usually you'll see a player favoring one or the other as the switch time between weapons is relatively slow. But for the most part in this type of 8v8 play, we usually see most people using their rifles or their carbines, and maybe one or two players on each team might use a pistol, or we might see an MP18 every once in a while, which can be a very powerful weapon on certain maps and in certain players' hands. Uh, is, the pistol, is the pistol going to be uh, uh, especially effective in close quarter situations? Is that for yes. clearing trenches? Yeah, that is, that's its primary use. It's, it does very little damage at long range across the map, and it's very inaccurate. So its, it's primary use is clearing trenches. And apart from that, you're not going to see it used for very many things. I actually did notice uh, a couple of melee kills uh, in the previous match between Average Joe's and SMW here. Uh, is how, how common is that in a competitive match, I guess? Uh, I it depends guess. on the player. Some players feel very comfortable with the melee system. Others, mm -hmm. not so much. Uh, 
often you'll see a player run out of ammo and have to use their bayonet, as reloading can take quite a long time with some of these weapons. Um, so that's something you'll often see. A player will flank, they'll kill two players, they'll be out of ammunition, and then they'll find the player that they're behind and they'll push behind them and stab them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll have two players in a gunfight that lasts a long time and both will run out of ammo and then they have to go to a melee fight between the two of them because they're both out of ammo. Um, sometimes one guy will try and reload really quick and the other guy will try and chase him down with a bayonet. It's, uh, it's, it's dynamic and it really depends a lot on the situation. Looks like we will be going live in just a second. It seems we do have eight players for both teams, so we're just waiting on the admin to yes, ensure indeed. that both teams are ready. And then we will be going live with this match. Uh, we do apologize to everyone that we're running a little bit of behind on schedule. Uh, obviously, the schedule is an optimistic schedule, and we do have technical difficulties and the like, so hopefully the day doesn't go too long. But uh, Or maybe we hope it goes long so we get a nice long day of Verdun. We'll see. That's right.